got BBB here with Sam Wallace, ready to make his debut later this year. How are you doing, Sam? You alright, mate? Good, yourself? Um, very good, very good. It's been interesting hearing from all the, all the lads in the gym who are at a similar stage in the career. Like, how much does that help you in the gym, knowing there are other fighters in a similar position to you? It keeps you, keeps you driving you on, really. If they're going for the same goal as you, training for the same show, so it drives you on, yeah. I bet there's a bit of a competitive atmosphere in the yeah, gym, is there? Things, yeah, it can be. If you're doing certain exercises or someone, I you don't want them to get it, get it before you. So, like. And obviously, it seems there's a, a bit of a, a difference in the amount of amateur experience that you've all got. Uh, how, for those that don't know, just when did you get into boxing and how long have you been doing it? I got into it when I was about 12 or 13. Um, I ended up having 32 fights for uh, Granger Park just down the road, so I've been doing it a while. I took a little bit of time out and then uh, now I feel like it's the right time to come back. So And how much do you think that amateur experience is gonna help you when you, you turn pro and step through the ropes? I think it will help, but I think it's a totally different ball game you probably stepped into. Like I I left the amateurs with head guards as a senior. Obviously there's no head guards in the pros, so uh, well, it's different now when the amateurs go back then. Um, and then I imagine then a lot of your work in the gym is sort of trying to make that transition, getting used to all those sorts of little things, yeah. the, the subtle differences. I've always had sort of, a, I would say a pro style as an amateur, like if it was a close fight it would have probably went the other way because maybe their style was a bit more picky off and I want to be more in your face, um, but I have, it was a good experience in the amateurs but I wasn't part of it. No. I imagine that style will uh, help you settle very nicely, bring yeah. sell a few tickets, generate a bit of interest. So, I'm hoping so, like, I'm hoping so. How have you found that sort of side of it, out of the ring, like selling the tickets? and it, 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 Difficult at times, because obviously with the Covid and stuff, it's, um, you're asking people to spend money that sometimes they don't have, but no, I think our time it will get better. I think it's a stage right at the minute, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah, I think obviously the way the world is at the minute, we're coming yeah. back into the, the local shows. We just yeah. had one on Friday night, Phil Jeffrey's got another one coming up. Yeah. And then there's like the Job's Dinner Show, it seems they're coming thick and fast now, which can only be it's brilliant news course. for you, yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing for us, but um, like I say, hopefully over time it'll get better. Um, it'll be more fun. Obviously the more you're fighting and the more you get recognised, the more people hopefully will want to come watch it. And like, was that part of the appeal of coming over to Job's gym or was it sort of no, the gym first and it then... It was gym first, it was just, um, I'd been out a while and uh, I just wanted to get back into it for fitness really at first. I never had any ambitions to box. I just thought I'd get back into it and see how it goes. Um, and obviously once you get back and if you've been bitten by the bug before, it doesn't take long before it uh, happens again. So <laughs> get, itchy, one, get itchy knuckles. I, once you start training and that, and then someone will say, do you fancy doing a bit of moving around? And you say, I'll do a bit of moving around. And then before you're not, you've had 10 spars and you're, you're fully fledged, ready to go, really. And then, see, one of the other massive factors, I think going from not boxing to boxing, will be making weight. Yeah. How uh, comfortable do you think you are with that side of things? I've always been good at Sticking to my diets and stuff because I boxed as a light out as a lighter weight as an amateur. Um, I used to box at like 54 kilos an amateur, uh, 54, 57. So I was around that category. So making weight wasn't was always like was always used to having to do it. So as an, as a professional, I think it'll be no different. Obviously, it'll be a little bit heavier, but not by much really. And would the aim be to sort of stick around that weight? Yeah, yeah, you don't want to fluctuate yeah, too yeah, much. I don't, don't want to. Once I get to it, I don't want to be like really happening. Go back up to four, like four stone at the time. I lose. I don't want to be like that. But um, no, I hope to stick around. I, I wish I could, mate. I wish I <laughs> could shift that. <laughs> And then, like, again, I suppose having potentially lots of fight dates, Matt's talking four or five shows a year of his own, working with the other promoters, that must help with everything really, with that side of thing. You've constantly got that goal to work towards. It's just, it sort of keeps you going, doesn't it? If, if you've got like, if someone to set your mind to, it keeps, it keeps things interesting for you. You're not just coming in the gym and going through the motions. You've actually got someone to train for. A lot of the time, I mean, it's, it's not a problem for me, but I know some people in the past, they haven't got nothing to train for, they think, well, I'll just... I don't need to be in the gym sort of thing. But it's, it's only human, isn't it, really? But then again, that's uh, yet another thing that separates boxers from the rest of us, from everybody else. Yeah. You have to have that, that different mentality. Like, is that natural to you, just as come easily? No, I, like, I wouldn't say the boxing came easy to us. I wasn't, there's more talented kids out there than me, but um, I had to work at it. But, and I'm still working at it now. You're never not, you're never not working at it. But um, 
No, it was what didn't come easy. Uh, you've got to make a lot of sacrifices, haven't you? Um, it's like I said in one of my last interviews, I'm lucky in the sense of I don't go out, I don't drink anything, so I'm at a bit of an advantage to some people who like a like a drink or two or stuff like that. So I'm lucky in that way. And this is it. As you get into competitive fights, those things could make the yeah, smallest difference. And yeah, hundred percent. Um, if people are going out and stuff like that, and you know, stuck in the house like a pilot light, and you haven't gone out, so it keeps it keeps, it, uh, keeps things keeps things ticking out, really. That'll be music to Matt's ears as a oh, coach. Yeah, I imagine if I love you. I probably I. Probably like, so he does not worry with me from Friday to Sunday. Some of the ones he's had through his doors in the, like, over <laughs> the years, I bet. Yeah, probably like. Any last message for those watching and to your fans? Just, what can we expect to see? Just when you come, just just be hopefully get entertained, really, of everyone, because I think everyone in the gym's going to put on a good show, and I, I think it'll be a good night. Um, yeah. that's, that's it, really. I just think it'll be a good night. Nice one. Thank you very much, Sam. Cheers. Yeah, thank you.